Right on the drop. Got this 21 inch here pitching plastics up shallow on the feather dam here. Locked up. Yeah. This is a better fish too because this sucker just cranked it. Fish, nice 21 inch slot. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Out here on the Wisconsin River again, throwing plastics and live bait. Should be a good video. This is kind of a late intro. Didn't film one. It was kind of foggy this morning. Pretty cold, 17 degrees. It's warmed up nicely, but as you can see, this high sky is not a good thing. But I can't tell you, we did get into a couple really good ones, so stay tuned. Just got this 21 inch here pitching plastics up shallow on by the dam here. You know, let her go. Good fish. Oh, Hooked up TV is back online at the dam on the Wisconsin River. Looking for these anchor walleyes. Just crack, just crack the plastic. Solid fish, like they want that plastic, boy. Nice little guy here, little 14 and a half inch probably dump him back. Okay, move. Off up. Yeah. This is a better fish too, because this sucker just cranked it. He got snagged, I was trying to move. Well, he felt really good at first, but wait a minute. He's a waves out there, I can't really tell what. Yeah, get the net lock up, please. Oh, come over, come over here. Yeah. That's a good one, that's Woo. a big. Nice, very good, good job. I got it. I knew that was a good one. Twenty-one. Just got this guy, twenty-one incher on this. This plastic, the chartreuse colored jig. Been throwing it all day. It's a four-inch moxie. Um, just working the edge of this hole out here, where the current kind of slacks up. This hole will come up, and it's only probably 10, 15 feet. I'm sliding the boat back to. Get her unsnagged and he just just throttled that four inch box. He takes up pictures. Nice fish, nice 21 inch slot out here. Just pitch, I'm pitching plastic. Plastic seems to be working really good today. Alright, gonna release this nice slot here, 21 inch. Second slot of the day. Good goal, there she goes. Okay, so things that we're looking for, we're sitting on the edge of this big hole right here. Right here is our where we're setting our mark. And we're just pitching out and the current is letting it drift back and it steps up here and starts getting progressively shallower and that's usually where you get the bites. The front of the hole is good as well, but in this particular situation, it, it is hard to sit on the front of the hole. There's too much current there, and your jig just gets blown right past them before it drops in, then it drops into the deep, and they never get a chance to hit it. I'm sure there's fish on the front of the hole as well, but 
It's just you can't sit there very well because of the current. Okay, one thing I want to point out is a good visual indicator is these bubbles here. You see how fast it's flowing right here. And right on the edge of it, these bubbles start to slow down. This is a good place to set up. Set up in from it and pitch out. And then it'll, it'll drift back in the current and then when it hits that slower water usually that's where those fish are sitting and that's where you'll end up getting your bites. No, it's okay. Oh shoot. Oh baby. Yeah, the net. The net. Come on over here. That's a piggy. That's a piggy. Good job. There we go. There's a nice. 19 incher. Little fish just throttled that jig. Just destroyed that plastic. Beautiful fish. I'm gonna release this one. Big female. Alright, I'm gonna release this guy. Nice 19 and a half inch. Just cracked that plastic. Here she goes. Okay, we're just working this large flat area that's about 12 feet deep. Just casting out and just working the jig back. Just hopping it. And they're usually hitting it, pinning it on the on the drop. Bite's been pretty slow. I think that has to do with the bright sunny skies, but the fish are still fairly shallow compared to where they are at different times of the year with the sun being out like this. Fish. I had a, I was in a snag and I had a fish. That's crazy. Oh, he got off. Ah, frag. Also point out in this particular stretch there's a lot of wood and it seems the fish are setting behind the, the pieces of wood in the water. I'm just running this 6-8 Legend Tournament again with a Pissy Fun Carbon X reel. I'm running an 8 pound Daiwa G braid I think with a 8 pound fluorocarbon leader using a 3 8 ounce Google Eye with those 4 inch Moxies. You can kind of play with the color and see which ones they like. They seem to like this chartreuse pepper one though. And I'm just casting it out parallel with the boat and working it back, letting it hit bottom, and then giving it a little little bit of a pop. With the braid, the reaction's immediate when you pop it, unlike mono. So you want to be real subtle with your hops, and they'll usually strike it and try to pin it on the down when it's uh, falling back down to bottom. So let's give them a little hops. I can feel it tumbling across the bottom too, which is cool with braid and, and decent rods. You can feel like everything. I can actually feel when it gets into a snag, you'll know not to set the hook. Usually, where with mono, you can't really tell. Another thing to look for is these drop-offs behind sandbars. Fish will sit where it breaks to deeper water. I can put some uh, map shots in of what I'm talking about. Or I can just like this and put make a shot like this. So as it drops here, the fish will sit on these drops leading up to the larger uh, it holes there. Just crack the plastic. Oh, little guy. 15. 15 inch sauger. Just throw him back. 
want to look at these seams in the current like this right here, looking out where it, the fast water meets the slack water and makes this, creates a seam, you want to look for those areas and, and pull up and fish those, either anchor or spot lock. Got it. Huh? Hopped up. He ate that. Holy moly. Holy moly. It's a nice little fish there. Look at that. Just destroyed that freaking plastic. Nice little 16 inch fish there. Beautiful little fish. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Nice little. I'll fire him back. They're not keeping anything. It's out here to catch him. And destroy them. So I'm going to break down how I go about fishing these seams. I'll sit in in the less current so the motor isn't working so hard. Um, if I'm anchoring, I'll, I'll try to split the difference and be out in the middle of it. So I'll just sit on the seam like this and cast. Usually I'll cast right at the seam. And then I can pull it through the quicker water to get to the slack. And usually you'll get bit right in that mix right there with that see if i'm getting a good shot of this or not right where that mix is right there i'll try to zoom in on it if it, if it doesn't turn out a, as good as i hope it's hard to tell with the sun angle but then i'll just pop work the plastic and it'll flutter it'll hang in the current and when you're not in enough current sometimes they'll they'll trap at the bottom or or scoop it right off the bottom but yeah, this is, this is how I approach fishing these seams. All right, fun little outing out here on the river again today. I threw uh, plastics all day, them four inch moxies, just popping it and giving it a quick little pop like that. Um, didn't even use live bait, got two slots, a fat 19 and a half, and I think I got two or three other legals. This is a good time out here. Um, the bite's only gonna get better, leading right up until spring. Finally was able to use my 6.8 snap jig rod with the braid. I like uh, working that plastic. That's fun. That's a good bite once it gets going. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're not, please subscribe and stay tuned for our next video.